morning. Welcome back to a room full of germs because I've been coughing for three weeks straight. You know, once my bronchitis cough finally clears up, we can all kiss each other again or whatever we used to do. If you're watching this video right now, I'm guessing you're a regular user of the internet. Most of you have probably posted a picture or video of yourself online, maybe tweeted a random thought into the void you would typically keep to yourself in real life. The classic starter pack for anyone with a social media account. But once in a while, other than your parents and the same three people engaging with your posts, the power of the algorithm kicks in, and suddenly, you've got millions of eyes on your content you just posted for fun. We're gonna take a look at internet fame and how going viral is kinda weird, cause everything that happens online feels like you drank 5 coffees and put a YouTube video on 2 times speed. We witnessed a whole character arc and a villain origin story all in the span of a week, and it happened way too fast for my smooth brain to handle. Like I'm still trying to process why 2020 was almost 3 years ago. You can become internet famous in a day, if you post something the general public is hungry for, and they eat it up like a K-pop idol fan cam. Regular people have the ability to make anyone an overnight sensation and give them an entire career which is kind of cool. You can also become the internet's worst enemy in the same time frame. It's like that saying, inside every person, there are two wolves. The potential to become a social media celebrity and anxiety. If you really think about it, what even is the internet? Like, I don't even know where websites come from. Does someone draw them on a piece of paper and then scans them on a printer? I don't know. But at least with private internet access, you can protect yourself when you do visit websites. What you do on the internet with your own time should be for your eyes only. No one wants strangers looking into your search history to see you ordered the same shirt in 10 different colors. With the ability to hide your IP address, block malicious ads, and over 30 million downloads, private internet access is the most transparent VPN provider that never records or stores its users' data. In this day and age, you're probably going to end up using public Wi-Fi at some point, which can put you at risk for getting your data stolen. It's kind of like walking around with your wallet dangling on a string. All it takes is one thief and you can kiss your money goodbye. Using private internet access with its strong encryption is just that extra layer of protection. You ever just watch every single show on US Netflix by accident that you've run out of shows to watch? Well, there's a whole other world out there when you use a VPN with streaming services. Not using one is like paying for a buffet, but only getting salad. All you gotta do is just hop over to Japan server to access a bunch of exclusive shows. Anyone else keeping up with Chainsaw Man and Spy Family? It's literally the only way I can tell the weeks apart. They even have 50 servers in 50 US states. So if there's sporting events, block websites, or anything time zone or location specific you need to access, you can bypass restrictions by switching over to another server, which only takes a few clicks. And if you use my link in the description, you can get yourself an entire 83% off, which is only $2.03 a month. And to make the deal even better, you get an extra 4 months for free. They're one of the most cost-effective VPNs since you can protect up to 10 devices. And if it's your first time using a VPN and you're kind of worried, no worries. They have 24-7 customer support and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Thanks again to our sponsor and to you guys for always supporting the channel. So you guys know what a thirst trap is? According to the most credible source of information, Urban Dictionary, it's a sexy photograph or flirty message posted on social media for the intent of causing others to publicly profess their attraction. This is done not to actually respond or satisfy any of this attraction, but to feed the poster's ego or need for attention, at the expense of time, reputation, and sexual frustration of those who view the image or reply. Or it's just people posting hot pictures or videos of themselves because they feel like it. 2015? This definition might be a bit dated. Who wrote this, a founding father? The newest thirst trap trend that's been going around recently is called the Shy to Confident Challenge. What a name. Simple, yet bland. But it does tell you exactly what it's all about. Where you go from this... To this all while lip-syncing to the classic song Boyfriend by Justin Bieber, which I will not play because of copyright, but I'm sure you can imagine 2012 in your head, and it being played non-stop on the radio. Oh, you know what? Um, I actually don't have any change right now. Are you asking for money or are you- am I getting robbed? Wait, where's the confidence? Either I'm bad at noticing expressions, or maybe there's a part two to a 10 second TikTok? This is the hardest spot the difference game I've ever played.
have these people ever seen a shy person before? You think someone that doesn't want to draw attention to themselves would be fidgeting around, acting like they clogged the public toilet, and is too embarrassed to tell someone? A shy person would just leave in silence while having a panic attack, is what an introverted person told me. I wouldn't know anything about this specific situation. You know, I get it, it's just people having fun. But after watching like 20 of these, y'all smell that? that cringe smell. Good on these people for having the confidence to do this. You know they're already confident because shy people would never post something like this. Could you imagine a shy person discovering themselves after doing a TikTok challenge? After doing the shy to confident challenge, I've realized that I was confident all along. Now I don't have to dart my eyes around and touch every part of my body in public. The majority of people doing this challenge were conventionally attractive and mostly guys, which explains the audience becoming feral animals in the comments, but people were pointing out a lot of these guys were overdoing it and making very exaggerated expressions you probably wouldn't see in real life. Like, what is this? Ugh. If I saw someone change their expression that fast, I would run. I don't want to be the topic of discussion on a true crime podcast, probably sponsored by a smoothie or something. But what's this? A new challenger appears. What does this person have that the rest of these guys don't? This is Strange Kevin, and what makes him different is that he's not your usual conventionally attractive e-boy, hot k-pop idol, or six foot tall himbo. He's just an average guy with hair and eyes, making TikToks just for fun. But when he posted his version of the Shy to Confident challenge, the internet went wild and turned Strange Kevin into a 20 million views Kevin. He was getting so many likes, a whole bunch of comments sipping over him, offering to pay his bills, do his laundry, cook him food. He definitely capitalized on his quick rise to fame by posting more videos doing the same thing and live streaming to his newly found audience. I mean, gaining over 3 million followers seemingly overnight. You could say that the Harry Styles of TikTok was born November 2022. Sorry Harry, you're obviously watching this. You were just the first celebrity I could think of. People enjoyed the fact he looks like the guy next door and he wasn't over doing his expressions or being super cringy. Instead of being an alpha male, he looks kind and more gentle compared to the guys grinding on their phones. Good thing we have waterproof phones now. Ew. A lot of people were leaving comments trying to explain why he looks hot, but also not. But somehow, it works because of the way we perceive people or something. I'm not really sure where all these psychologists came from, but don't they have patience or a job they need to work out? A lot of women were saying that Kevin really understands what women find attractive, and he basically mastered the female gaze. Which I'm not sure what that even means. You know when people find a new word on the internet and everyone starts using it without fully understanding what it means? Kind of like how no one uses POV correctly. The female gaze is a term that's been used a lot recently on social media and commentary videos. And just to clarify, it is not lesbians, but a woman's point of view. The actual term comes from film. The female gaze is the way that women are portrayed through the eyes of a woman instead of a man. Through the eyes of a woman, women are seen as people with feelings and intelligence. The focus isn't necessarily on what the eye can see, but on what the heart can feel. Nowadays, people use it mostly as a comparison, where the male gaze is Megan Fox washing cars and a bunch of bros lifting everything they see at the gym. The female gaze is soft boys that shower every day who aren't afraid to show their feminine side and look non-threatening, which apparently is exactly how Strange Kevin looks. Here's some TikToks trying to explain it. This is the difference between the male gaze and the female gaze. This guy feels like she would be so fucking lucky. This guy feels like I would be so fucking lucky. And I'm telling you, till now I don't think anyone is close at getting it just right like Kevin did. Do you guys see what I mean? Finally, we now have an example of what we mean when we talk about the difference. Flynn Rider, bravado, ego, Eugene, vulnerability, love, care. I guess on a surface level it kind of works. This guy will definitely sell you a used car that doesn't work and then blame you for not checking it before buying it. This guy is vulnerable 
because there is not one thought behind those eyes. People were saying that Strange Kevin mastered the female gaze, and girls were basically falling in love with him over a 15 second TikTok. I haven't simped over a man in so long, I was beginning to question if I was still straight. This guy has mastered the female gaze quite honestly, lol. Okay, so looks are subjective, it's okay to have a preference for what you find attractive, but I don't think you would call this the female gaze unless this is what all females are looking for. And it was very clear in the comments, people didn't get the Kevin hype. And remember how someone said the female gaze is the subtle, soft, non-threatening, caring kind of look? Well, uh, oh boy. This is awkward. The universe is great at balancing itself out. Cause the faster someone gets famous, the faster their downfall. You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain cause of your digital footprint. This always happens. The internet FBI is really good at doing background checks and asking, this you? After Kevin's 15 minutes of fame, we find out he posted some misogynistic content and skits in the past. Not really fitting his title of mastering the female gaze. All of his content did not age well at all. I'm not even sure it was aged properly in the beginning. If you're putting yourself out into the public space, whether you like it or not, people are going to talk about you, especially when you're blowing up, gaining millions of views, and posted some questionable things in the past. That man y'all swear up and down is the female gaze personified. He was going viral on TikTok for reenacting domestic violence situations in which he was beating up a pregnant imaginary girlfriend. But that's y'all king, right? That's y'all female gaze? Oh, okay. Even before his problematic stuff came out, people were genuinely concerned confused at why everyone was finding him attractive and why he was the person to master the female gaze. His response was to make fun of other people's appearances in retaliation to other people making fun of him, which made everything even worse and did not help his image. He even said that the person everyone's talking about is a different person. It's not him. When, um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it clearly is. <laughs> this is such a fucking bad look. Yo, people are all on the internet shitting on me because they think that I'm this person. The criticism he was getting wasn't even that bad. People just didn't understand the appeal. I think it's okay to ask. People might have not asked in the nicest way, but hey, it's the internet. Master the female gaze? That's a pretty big title to have. Why are we saying this is what all women are looking for when this term is one big confusing mess that means different things to people? So after becoming the internet's 15 minute guy of the month heartthrob, in the span of what seems to be like two days, his entire reputation took a dive, a love dive. And when you're on the internet, it's really easy to get dogpiled on. So don't just trust the first source of information that you see. I think it's important to do your own research, which is why I went to go check out his live stream. Could have been the timing, but I got scared, took a quick screenshot, and left. You ever heard of Sampaku eyes? If you have, you might be one of the people that wish you didn't. Literally translated, Sanpaku means three whites, which refers to how you can divide up an eye into pieces. With the whites taking up three of the four segments, Sampaku is when you can see the white of someone's eye, either above or below the iris. Some famous celebrities that have this type of eye, Billie Eilish, Emma Chamberlain, Taehyung, and Lisa. It's an eye shape that gives off a very mysterious, aloof, expressive, and sleepy kind of vibe. It also originates from a Japanese superstition, and you might suffer a pretty bad death. If you have white visible at the bottom of your eyes, then look out. The world is out to get you. This condition supposedly means that you're in danger from the outside world. Some other well-known people with some Paku eyes, Marilyn Monroe, Michael Jackson, Princess Diana, and JFK. If you want a quick history lesson, just Google them. The lore is very interesting, but prepare yourself to be scarred. Looking through my Instagram pictures, I'm scared. I usually wear colored contacts in my videos, which makes my irises look bigger because of their size. But normally you can see the white part underneath my eye. Oh no. How do I power wash this out of my brain? Anyone else have this? Can we like watch out for each other or something? Not sure how well it's gonna work, but better to suffer together than alone. Another reason for me to never leave my house. I need to get groceries. So one of the reasons why Strange Kevin did this trend so well is because of how his eyes are built. He's got a lot of that scleral show, which is when the whites of your eyes are showing. It gives him an advantage since you need to convey the right emotions for this challenge. It's a lot easier for him to change his expression to a mysterious confident one, and people can just imagine and make up his entire personality without actually knowing anything about him. We even made eye shapes a trend. Remember when everyone wanted almond-shaped, elongated cat eyes not too long ago? People were achieving this look with makeup, posing a certain way, even going under the knife to get a cosmetic procedure called the fox eye lift. A small little indie TV 
TV show I'm sure you've never heard of called Euphoria appeared in 2019. Alexa Demi's eyes were a popular topic of discussion from how she has bedroom eyes all the way to her makeup looks. The character she plays in the show is described as confident, emotional, extroverted, and just by the way she looks, her facial features really fit that description to a T, which then caused the rise of the Siren vs. Doe Eye Challenge. It's a trend where you change your eye shape from doe eyes, which are round and innocent, to siren eyes, which are the sleepy, alluring eyes. Everyone was trying to replicate the siren eye look on social media because of Euphoria's popularity at the time. Just goes to show that the beauty standards of the time really play a big part in how people perceive you. And maybe in a month, a different eye shape will get its time to shine. My vote is for childish, round, Asian eyes. Are people just reaching into a bag to pull out words? Whether we like it or not, appearances are important in this day and age. Even the way that your eyes look can impact your quality of life, what opportunities you can get, and your career. If you watch the news or the reality show Big Brother, you might know TV personality Julie Chen back in the day when she wasn't as famous yet. Her boss at the time told her that she would never become a news anchor because of her Asian eyes, which I'm pretty sure they were talking about her monolids, and they recommended her to get plastic surgery to change them. Because of your heritage, because of your Asian eyes, sometimes I've noticed when you're on camera and you're interviewing someone, you look disinterested. In like some of my interviews, like I'm listening to, like in this one, I'm listening to this um, sheriff's deputy talk and all I'm looking at is my eyes, like do I look bored or disinterested in, in what my subject is telling me? I mean, if you look at the after, the, the eyes are bigger, mm -hmm. I look more alert. Mm -hmm. um, Fabulous. Mm -hmm. More expressive. More expressive. Everything kind of, the ball did roll for me. Keep in mind, this was back in the day when Asian representation in the media wasn't as common as it is now, and no one really knew what a blepharoplasty was unless you got it yourself, which we now know as double eyelid surgery. This procedure has become so common that teens are getting it as a graduation present, and there's not that much stigma around getting it done anymore if it can help you get farther in life. But if times were different and the beauty standard was flipped around, especially with the rise of Asian media becoming popular all over the world, people could have just as easily told her her to keep her eyes the same. In the end, it's just another fascinating tale of a regular person becoming famous over seemingly nothing. Well, I guess we're just gonna move on to the next thing so our brains don't have a chance to think about how nothing in life actually matters. The general public is more unpredictable than the YouTube algorithm, so make sure to feed it with a like and a comment, and that way you can teach it more about the female gaze. The look, not the LGBT one, although I am willing to learn more about both topics. Your engagement with my content helps me pop up on your recommended when the internet spits out something interesting for me to talk about. Have a good day, try not to be dumb, and I'll see you in the next one.